Our brains release chemicals to our body. Our brain releases a chemical that gives us feelings. Our brain chooses to do that. It does it when it is it, it responds to things, but it it does a it is co constituated of two things, of the encounter with the world through chemicals, and then with the distribution of brain chemistry to the body to signal what that just ha what just happened and give it meaning. And because of the difference in time between when something happens and when we are building our narrative of it, that, that gap that it's like a fraction of a fraction of a fraction of a second, but from a quantum perspective, it is basically eternity. It's where they go in the jaunt if they don't get knocked out beforehand. That's where all of our understandings of the universe are generated from, not from the actual experience, but from that fractionally delayed narrative of it. But we act from the narrative, which means we supersede and overrule the uh, the objective chain reaction of chemistry that like moves things through our body. And our, we start deploying the feel good and feel bad chemicals to things that don't necessarily actually make our body more or less injured or pleasured. So coming into awareness is coming into acceptance of like what your body is telling you and then moving towards non-destructive feel-good chemistry in your brain. You, you're reprogramming the map. The, you, are, you, are, you are redefining what the cheese is in the map. And all that really is is allowing yourself to interact with the world non-reactively. I hate to use the... Again, this is all turning into hippie bullshit. No one should listen to me. These points have been made a million times. I'm not special. I'm just in front of a camera. I was just born at a time when I assumed everybody needed to know my fucking opinion about something as if it fucking mattered. I realize it's just embarrassing to even say this stuff, but going with the flow. Allowing that uh, reactive uh, assumption, the flinch, to work itself out and to allow you to look around and be like, oh, this isn't actually giving me the uh, response I thought it was. I don't have to clench against this. Uh, maybe I don't have to have the same mental response to it. Uh, I mean, I understand that what I'm fundamentally doing is is I'm trying to... Uh, I'm exercising... I am... Conducting an experience, an exercise in large animal euthanasia. Uh, I am euthanizing my own sense of self and and the sense of self of those around me. Uh, to to grip with the fact that like what we think we can control is already occurred, and all we can do is respond to it. And that means we have to let down our alerts, our shields. Not reinforce them. Our, our 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 instinct is to reinforce the shields. Oh shit! We can't control what's happening. Something's coming. Batten down the hatches. But I would say the way to to think about it is, not only has the thing already happened, but the shield has already been broken. So then the question is: Are you going to t spend the time between now and whatever you're afraid of? Bracing against it, and therefore spending all of the time between now and the impact arrayed against yourself and against the people around you, therefore robbed of the ability to have that genuine sense of feeling good and still that I talked about, meaning that you're going to be more and more frantically hurting yourself in the long term to distract yourself in the short term, and ensuring that when you finally do collide with reality, oh, I'm actually authoring something much more awful than I was even afraid of. If you accept that the shields have already failed, then you can just try to find that center and not 
bunch yourself around your fear of the unknown, but accept that the worst thing you could think of has happened. And here's the thing. The more you accept that the worst thing you can think of has happened, the less likely that is to actually occur. Because you can engage with the world around you, not through your neurotic screen that's going to push you towards self-destruction, but through a, 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 uh, a clear pain that allows you to see clearly other people, see into other eyes clearly, and to gain a sense of self that pulls you away from the real fear, which is not that an X is going to happen, but that X is going to happen to me as I constituate myself now. And the thing is, is if a bad thing happens to me as I constituate myself now, I will be so horrified by the loss of future pleasure, one way or the other. However minutely or grandly we imagine that, from death to, oh no, I'm not going to be able to eat meat as much, is going to drive us into annihil uh, annihilation. But the more we offload the self, the more we can take those changes without even knowing we are, without even we knowing we're making a choice. We are subconsciously pivoting to a new magnetic north. Now, of course, I say this to keep myself where I am. Like, I'm talking about this, and guess what? Talking about this stuff, guess what well, Guess what? the chemicals I get? Oh, I get the good, baby. I get the good chemicals. I get the good chemicals. They go through me. Oh, yeah. And because people respond and say, I think this is good and it's helping me, I get to tell myself, okay, this is better than other things I could be doing to feel good that never actually feel as good. Even though I'm changing my chemistry, what the hell? I am left with the necessity of falling onto my faith in my senses, which is all we finally have. And my senses tell me that the deepest satisfaction comes from that, and that as such, if the worst thing I, I imagine can happen, which for me personally is some sort of physical betrayal of my body, because it already happened once. I had a uh, absolutely out of nowhere uh, and, and, and honestly medically improbable thing happen to me in my late high school years that completely just like threw me off of any kind of course of adulthood and came out of nowhere. Uh, and uh, I believe at one point they said that it's something so rare that there's like a single digit number of times, or no, a hundred or so. I think there are a hundred or so reported cases for like the specific thing that happened to me. And so I've been spending my entire life since then waiting for the other shoe to drop. And that has ripped me out of my life for longer than I like thinking about and has made me treat other people very badly in a way that at the time didn't feel that bad because I was hurting too. And all I, I feel differently now, and I feel, I feel, but I also still feel like a lot of, I still have like experiences. I still remember to think about my past, and I still look at the future, and it's scary. The future is scary. No matter how you can strip neuroses from it and try to be as objective as possible, and there's still something to be scared of coming around the bend. Like the rest, every way everyone responds to the world tells you that like everybody knows something that we can't say and can't even uh, accept ourselves. But when I say, well, what do I do with that knowledge? Do I freak out about it and try to stop it? Which in my case means like frantically going to the doctor, trying to get like some tests and find out like what exactly is wrong with me. Or if you don't feel that way, a lot of people, the desire to get a gun and go to the woods is the same thing. The desire to, like, have some final confrontation is part of that same desire, to avoid what you're really scared of. Which is not death, necessarily, but vulnerability. Because I don't think we know what exactly is going to happen. Yes, I think it has occurred in, like, a metaphysical, metaphysical sense already. But as I said, that gap is essentially eternity. So we cannot know. We cannot. We have to accept that. In the face of the enormity of that gap between sense and perception, we have to accept our own finitude. 
So we don't know what it's going to look like. So we have to ask ourselves, who, how can we take the time we have as we are before we become someone we don't recognize, which is happening every minute anyway, but like not always in a direction that we can predict. How can I spend the time before that happens building a base to move forward from one way or the other in this world or the next? And that's what I'm trying to build. It is, it's what Heidegger talks about, you know, like he really did identify like the central problem of philosophy is that we're talking about uh, structures and abstracts, but what we really are trying to get at is how do we make it so we feel that way? How do we make life so that our moments are composed of those fully embodied senses where our brain is being chemically told that everything we are doing is right? Right. 